West Point. West Point at that time was the preeminent in, uh, engineering university in the United States and would provide expertise for the foundry. So William and Governor Campbell started this foundry with the aid of West Point and they were very creative. They had a top to bottom control of everything. In other words, they took trees and dirt and out the end came steam trains. For instance, they built the first steam train in the United States and the second steam train in the United States. First steam train, best friend of Charleston, started the first service in the United States of a steam train on December 25th, 1830. Uh, they also had many firsts. They built the first the steam engine for the first uh, steamboat. They built uh, steam engines for all of the sugar mills in the Caribbean. They built pipes, they built iron pipes for New York City. So this was a family that produced something that was completely um, above and beyond what anything had happened before. This helped turn the United States from an agrarian economy into a, an industrial economy. Chairman Zeifard, disconnected. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so getting back to the, to the uh, 19th century, um, so what happened from there was that um, the, the, the foundry was uh, run by, as you said, William and Governor Kimball, and it was you know, a, it changed it changed the U.S. and Governor Kimball was the brains behind it. William Kimball was probably not the real brainstorm, but he was part of it. And this house is the only standing part of that golden age of the United States industrial development. And we've tried to restore it so that it looked as close as we could to what it would have back in the, in the, in the early 1800s. So I would invite you all to come and visit, look through the house. I'm going to have a couple of words about the restoration as you walk through it. Uh, the outside of the house, as I said, was in, was unsalvageable. It was, was, it was asbestos shingles. Uh, the windows were broken. They were boarded. We managed to save most of the interior, and all of the interior that you see is pretty much original. The floors, the walls, the ceilings, the trim. The windows are not original, but they have been manufactured to fit and to look like the original window. So the house ha is structured as a grand house on a small scale. And there's no question, we know that uh, Abraham Lincoln was here, we know that Linville Scott was here, we know that Robert E. Lee was here, all had dinner in the dining room here, which you can go and see. Uh, probably uh, Washington Irving was here, good friend of Governor Kemble, uh, and probably, as you know, the Kemble knew everybody who was anybody back then. So the number of luminaries that have been in this house is probably something that, that boggles my mind and makes me incredibly proud to have restored this house. So I invite you all to come and have a look through the house. As you see through the house, perhaps start in the kitchen, which is where the original kitchen where uh, food was prepared, taken up the stairs, uh, the butler's pantry at the back of the kitchen, of uh, the dining room here, was prepared and served for the guests in the formal dining room. The formal sitting room, you'll be able to see, and upstairs there's two bedrooms. There have been a few minor changes we had to do just for modern convenience, because the original house did not have bathroom. So the original outhouse was not, uh, was not, um, it's no longer there, but, but it was behind the house and they used chamber pots. We've decided that perhaps the bathrooms might work a little bit better in the 21st century. So I invite you all to walk through the house and to uh, just um, 
take yourself back to the 19th century, to an era in which the U.S. was changing dramatically. There was amazing things going on, and the Campbell family and the foundry were part of an amazing change that was taking place in the United States at that time, and this was the epicenter. And I'll just say one other thing that, I mean, I have several other little anecdotes that could contribute to this, but Charles Haswell wrote a book in 1840 that was the Bible of mechanical engineering. He was at one time the director of the foundry, and his book written in 1840 when he was at the foundry is the Bible for the apprentices and people working at the foundry. And this was basically the Silicon Valley of 1820. So I, I think that this is the most, uh, the most amazing place. And I'm very proud to invite you to come and look at it. Uh, you, you, you do. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I have one request to just if you take your shoes off and use. Uh, the slip-ons, the board, the, the original two